Hi guys, thanks very much for joining me today for uh, the lockdown fly tying demonstration. So what is it? Well, basically I've got together with a few other YouTube friends and we've pre-tied some flies for your entertainment and education, I hope. And uh, the tires are going to be online to answer any questions about the patterns they're showing. And if you want to have a look in the descriptions below, you'll see a link to all the different tires that we have today and the time that their video is going to be published. So if you want to log in for anything in particular, please feel free to do so. And of course, the videos will be available immediately after the premiere. And if you have any subsequent questions, you're free to do so in the comments section below. Please support the tires. It's great that we've all come together to do this for you. So give them a like and please feel free to ask plenty of questions. I'm going to kick the show off. So without further ado, let's get into it. Right guys, I'm going to get the show kicked off by tying this suggestive pattern. Now as you can see, it's a dry fly. It's really designed for the rivers. And it's got a little bit of flash in below it there. I don't know how well you can see it with the focus of the camera. But I'm going to tie this for you to get started. So the hook in the vise then is a Hanak H330 barbless hook. It's at size 10. It's on a medium wire and it's a bronze hook. Now the thread I'm going to be using initially is the UTC. It's at 70 denier and it's a black thread. So first thing to do then is get a little bit of wax onto the thread and then what I'm going to do is run a bed of thread catching in just behind the eye down and around the bend of this hook it's an emerging pattern and it's uh, really made for any sort of hatch that involves LDOs, Mark Browns just early season stuff and it always does quite well. Now I'm just going to adjust the hook in the vise ever so slightly while I put on my body and tailing. And what I'm going to be using for that is some moose mane. Uh, great material for bodies. Uh, represents lots of different hatching bugs. Now I've already picked out three fibres and what I've done is I've tried to line up the points as best I can and once I did that I just gave the whole thing a lick and it just keeps them all together, makes it a little bit easier to tie on. Now, I don't want a huge tail. It's an emerging pattern. The insect's not fully formed, so I want about a centimetre protruding from the back end there. So I've got it in with a couple of wraps and notice I'm not pulling away any of this. I'm trying to keep that as is because that's going to help me with my body later on. So what I want to do really with this is use it to bulk up the body area. Now I'm trying to keep it on top of the shank and it's, it's not playing the game with me. So just taking my time and I'm going to bring it all the way up to the thorax area. And while I'm messing about with this, I'd just like to mention uh, a big thank you to all the other tyres that are taking part in today's event. Um, it's really good of them to schedule their videos to come out at a certain time in order to make this happen. So what I've done is I've grabbed my moose mane now and I've just folded it back on the shank. And I'm going to use my thread to come all the way back down. Now the reason I started with UTC of course is because it's a bit thicker and it's just going to be a lot quicker when I come to do the body formation which I'll show you in a second. So now I've come all the way down with my moose mane and I've got that out the back. I'm going to use that to wrap my body shortly. Now with the UTC if I give it a little spin anti-clockwise it'll flatten out the thread and then I can just come up and start to really work a nice taper into my thorax here. 
want it a little bit thicker at the top. And obviously the thread I'm going to change over to will be the Ultimate Tine Silk from Fish On. And what I don't want to do is spend a lot of time wrapping. So, that's looking pretty good. And next I'm going to bring up my body fibres. So, I could use the rotary function on the vise, but I do get the fact that many people won't have an inline rotary vise, so I'm going to just do it the old fashioned way. The first turn is always the hardest. Once you've got that first turn in, everything else seems to fall into place. But the first one's always a bit of a bugger. So just take your time with it. I'm going to have to come back. I'm not happy with the way that's uh, that's going. Second time maybe, there we go. As I say, once you've got that first turn in, everything else just follows suit. And it's much easier. So I was really pleased that, um, you know, the likes of Davy McPhail and Steve Cullen, you know, they're all, I mean, you'll know who they are uh, if, you, if you follow any of the time videos on YouTube. Um, but as well as great tyres, we've got some fantastic anglers uh, on on today so I'm sure if you've got any questions about fishing the various flies these boys will be able to help you out so once I've got up to the thorax area here I'm just going to get a few wraps in to keep that in place and then once I'm sure it's secure I can come in with my scissors and remove the excess Okay, that's looking not too bad. I'm just not very happy with that first turn, actually. Didn't quite go as well as I'd hoped. But uh, I'm going to live with it on this one. Next, I'm going to put in a little bit of flash at the thorax here. And what I'm using for that is some Opal Mirage in large. It's, uh, I would have liked medium, but I haven't got medium. So I'm just using what I've got. And I'm going to catch that in just there like so I'm going to come back a little bit because I want this to be seen from underneath so when the fish comes up it gets a really good look at the fly and this is the little bit that will catch its attention with any luck now I'm going to add a couple of turns just to bring it up to beat my thread really and secure it it's not going to see as much as you're seeing at the moment once the remainder of the dressing comes over the top so I'll just catch that in with a few turns and secure it into place now uh, I'm, I'm pretty much done with this thread but before I cast off with it I'm just going to tidy up a little and then I can come in with my whip finish tool and take that away Okay, all well so far. So I'll just put that to the side and next I'll come in with my Fish On Ultimate Tine Silk. As you can see it's black and I'm going to add a little bit of wax to this thread. Now, more often than not you'll hear me say that oh, super glue is much better and it is if you're going on to a bear hook. But this has got materials on already so the wax will do just nicely. So I'm going to catch that on and I just see below the bottom there, I've just missed a bit with the UTC and I'm going to catch that in. So that's looking a lot neater now and I can come in and just remove my waste. Now before I go any further what I want to do is protect my body and my thorax area and I'm going to do that with a thin layer of UV resin. Now if you don't like resins or you don't have access to them, a little bit of nail varnish will do the same job. I just find this is a, a little bit quicker and certainly you don't want to hear me singing a song while we're waiting on varnish drying. Just 
just catch that underneath. That's the important bit. And that's looking pretty decent actually. And the varnish also hides any little mistakes like I made at the start there when I put that first turn in initially and wasn't very happy with it. The varnish has kind of hidden that, which is a, a good thing. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to add an, an underwing and I'm using some uh, Troutline CDC. This is the Ultra Select, so you get 50 feathers and what, what they do is they line them all up for you. There's no um, messing about sitting. I remember evenings of sitting with a dram and going through bags of CDC trying to sort out the best of it. Whereas these are, uh, they come all lined up for you. So I've picked out three plumes. I'm just going to move that one over. And I'm going to pull them through my fingers just to get that wing shape. Now what I want with a wing is it not to protrude way past, but just sort of in line with the bend of the hook. So I'm going to catch that there. Keeping it on the top of the shank. And once I've got it into position, I can lift the CDC and get a few turns in front. Just to make sure your thread doesn't back up on you. And then remove the waist. And that's looking pretty good. Okay. Next then. We're going to add our deer hair wing, and I'm using some uh, coastal deer hair here. And what I want to do is take approximately a centimetre, and it's uh, you'll not see this on camera. But always with deer hair, once you've got it out, make sure you come in with your comb and just comb out any of the under fur any of the dead ends, try and get it out before you load it into your hair stacker um, because if you don't do that it ends up causing all kinds of problems and it doesn't stack properly if you've done it right all your tips should be nice and married up there might be some dead ends in there and you can pull them out with your fingers as we go. So just any of the dead ends, pull them away. Now I want this to protrude slightly past my CDC. So I'm just going to measure it up again just to make sure. Measure twice, cut once. And then just off camera here, I'm going to take away my excess. Then where I've cut it, I can dress it back from the eye a couple of millimetres and then very loosely get a few wraps in, start coming through the cut ends. Don't tighten right down on this initially, especially with these ultimate tying silks because what can happen is you end up cutting right through your deer hair and uh, you've got to start again. They're very strong. They don't snap easy. So what I'm going to do is, it looks a little bit messy on your side. I'm just going to come in through the cut ends. And try and tidy that up somewhat. Okay. Even if it's a little messy at this point, I'm not too worried. So that's looking not too bad. So what I like to do, I like to add in some snowshoe to the pattern. Uh, and I've got one here, this one's olive, I mean I would, I need to try and get a hold of a brown one, but um, olive's what I've got, so olive's what I'm going to use. I'm just going to cut a little bit off camera, and it is minuscule. You know, when I show it up, it, it looks a lot there, but there's not much here, to be honest. And what I want to do is just get some of that under fur out of the way, and I want to rotate this around the top of the fly. So the way you do that is if I start it on my side, 
and then bring my thread round. You can see it's starting to rotate round to you, which works out just perfect. few turns just to hold it into place tidy everything up there and that's looking not too bad fairly pleased with that now if you were of a mind to you could add a sight around here pink white orange whatever color you think's uh, going to do you the best best job for sight but uh, i'm not going to bother with this pattern uh, i'm going to be fishing this at fairly close range so i'll be able to see it so next i'm going to add in a little bit of a dubbing loop and what I'm going to use in that dubbing is some trout stalker stuff and this is the Highland Pete and I've got a little bit in my fingers here and I'm just going to use my bodkin needle to open up the thread split the thread then insert my tiny little bit of dubbing, it doesn't take much and then I'm going to spin it up now while that's spinning up there I'm going to grab my other Borkin needle the one I use for glue and resins and I'm going to just take my super glue brush and take a little bit onto my needle now what this does is it helps finish the fly and make sure that this dubbing doesn't go anywhere other than where I want it to go so that's spun up nicely I'm just going to pull it out so it's nice and thin don't need a lot uh, you can see I've not got very much there if I hold it up like that there's maybe an inch and a half so I'm going to pull everything out of the way and while the glue's still wet I can come through it slick everything back and then the fly is ready for the whip finish now you can give it a little treatment but that my friends is the finished article and if I just show you that on its side you'll see that we have uh, the little bright bit the footprint on this fly is, is awesome. So that's me. I hope you enjoyed that. And remember to click on the next link. I think Steve Cullen's up next. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Stay safe and I'll see you all next time.